Did you know this? Did anybody so. know this? Did anybody so. know this anything? Okay. I'm wearing high heels yes. and it's killing me. <laughs> <laughs> but I thought since last day I had to show it. <laughs> <laughs> by sitting down because <laughs> all right here's the, here's the deal whether you know it or not or whether you realize it or not you are leaders I mean not just future leaders you are leaders now why do I say that first because you are the intellectual elite you are creme de la creme you are admitted into the University of the Philippines minimum Right? Which takes a lot of doing. And the University of the Philippines, Diliman, is the university that is the top university in the Philippines, bar none. So, just your savings. I come from UP Diliman, or I graduated from UP Diliman, gives you already stature which you do not realize you have. But people will look up to you, not only because one, you come from the university, but to, because you come from the university, you have to have something up here. Can it be that you don't? If you fail in this class, it's not really our fault. It's your fault. Because you have no what, is, what it takes to pass. And nobody's trying to make you fail, right? But excellence is not the only important thing that matters. Do you know what the university motto is? Who knows? Honor and excellence. Honor and excellence. Honor first before excellence. It's not excellence and honor. It's honor and excellence. And what is the fruit of honor and excellence? Is it not competence and integrity? In other words, if you have lived up to your promise and your potential as a university student, you are in a position to be part of the solution of this country's problems, not part of the problem. Yes? And what does that mean as far as you are considered? You are a leader now. Can you assure me that as a leader, you are going to, right now, and until you finish, the, uh, until you finish your courses, are you going to act with honor yes. and integrity? Because I'm going to tell you, class, you think cheating is something that is very, very unusual? It's very useful in the university, and this is what bothers me so much. Because you do not have to cheat. And cheating in the small things is going to lead to cheating in the large things. And all these people that you have contempt for, because they are corrupt, because they are cheating, are people who may have, in fact, been part of the university. As a matter of fact, if you Think about it, that's, I, I keep on telling this because we are always so proud. You be by ah, Okay, I think six of the, I don't know, the majority of presidents of the Philippines came from UP. The majority of the courts of the, the, the Supreme Court chief justices come from UP. The majority of the speakers of the House come are UP. The majority of the Senate president are UP. It's anti -Mail. If they were so good, why are we where we are now? And so you have to ask yourselves that. And part of the reason is because we have always looked at excellence and not looked at honor and integrity. And so I want you to pledge to me that after this, I do not do it. Why do I do you be peace? Do not cheat. Because once you cheat, you are no, now no longer part of the solution anymore. You are going to be very much a part of the problem. Right, class? Okay, so now we've established that you are leaders. We've established that you have excellence and that you are by God going to help that you, it's going, that you are going to have honor. So what is the next step? The next step is, of course, seeing to it that what you can do, you are going to do. I don't know how many of you know this. You know this? I am only one. Who knows that? I am only one, but I am one. I cannot do everything, but I can do something. 
what I can do, I ought to do. And with the grace of God, I will do it. And if all of us ascribe to that, that mantra, I call that that mantra, then indeed this, this country is going to take its place sooner rather than later among the tigers and the developed countries of the world. But it will depend on you. And that means, therefore, that if you are going to help this country, you've got to be in the country. And any of you have a little ambitious of going abroad so that you can earn more, please disabuse yourself because by doing that, you are essentially betraying the people in the Philippines who trusted you and who invested their money in you because your tuition, no matter how much you pay in UP, is still not enough to, under, to, to underwrite the costs of educating you from UP. All you have to do is look at that or at the numbers. So all of you who are full cost, I'm full cost, just compare what you would have paid in Hapaleo or Basal. That's full cost. You pay here, what? One half? Of what was up, or the nail, what you got? All right. And then, of course, there are the scholars, the ones who are, who are who have the brains, but unfortunately come from families where whose incomes do not allow the university to make sure that there is going to be opportunities for those. So, if you turn your back on the country, if you turn your back on the Filipino people, what you are doing essentially is you are exacerbating the problem rather than helping in the solution. So if you insist on going abroad, at the very least, will you pay back the entire cost of your education in UP, plus interest? I mean it. You'd be surprised that all the members of the College of Medicine, practically the entire class goes to abroad, and nobody pays back. And then they give mga donation, donation, a thousand dollars, give two thousand dollars, slap, slap, slap. Do you know how much it costs to educate you, to make you a doctor, and then you give one thousand dollars, tapos may may utang na loob pa ang university? Gago ba kayo? <laughs> no, really. I said that at the, you know, in the UP College of Medicine. What's the matter with you? What you need is to give a million dollars each. Boy, everybody said why this woman is crazy, but that's not <laughs> I mean, you know, think of it. The address is 13 years ago, you all that interest piling up, compounding on each other. Okay, so here's the deal. You're going to be as good and as honorable as you should be. You are going to stay in the Philippines. And if you leave the Philippines, you are at least going to try to pay back. And if you don't do any of the above, this is my last threat to you. This is a threat that I will carry out. Do not, do not think that I am kidding. What is my last threat? If you do your own way and add to the problems of the Philippines, Mrs. Monson is going to haunt you <laughs> from the grave. <laughs> I intend to go up there. And from up there, I'm going to look down on you and I am going to confront you at the worst possible moments in your life. Fred, <laughs> Fred, you know on your honeymoon? <laughs> on the short step, you feel yourself with the bones and clang and holding your toes? that you have let the Philippines down and you have let her down. And I'm going to tell you something else. Once that happens, you are going to lose all your sexual urges during <laughs> Okay? D. And Fred. <laughs> Carol and a stick. 
and I am going to win that state because this is what I'm 70 years old now. Maybe I can last another 10 years, I hope. <laughs> by that time, you would have made your career choices. By that time, I'm fresh out of this world, <laughs> waiting to get back at you. <laughs> class, God bless you and God bless the people.